along the corridor of time, we who are parents hear the first faltering footsteps of the men and women of tomorrow. They who will inherit the freedom for which we fight. Our children. Let us never forget that they are the future. Only they can make reality of our dreams. That brave new world for which we hope is theirs to make and to maintain. Its quality will depend upon their quality. And their quality depends upon us now. What are we to do about it? Well, oddly enough, the war has a way of pointing out what can be done for the peace. And here's a case in point. Because of war, noble parks and stately mansions have become residential nurseries. Many have been taken over and equipped by the Red Cross and St. John at the request of the Ministry of Health. Now they are completely devoted to the welfare of children under five. Open the doors and let them in. How are these young people cared for in their lovely homes? But first, who are they and why are they here? Well, some of them are the children of mothers in the services who are engaged in war work. Others are children from big cities recovering from strain. Some are orphans. If they were not given special care, the war would deprive them of normally healthy childhood. So the Red Cross in St. John has taken them under its wing. Their relatives are quite happy and content with the arrangement. They know that the Red Cross is the means by which all may share in healing the wounds of war. They know that they share with everybody else privilege of contributing to its great work. They're able to play a fuller part in the fight for their children's future because these nurses relieve them from anxiety and free them for their wartime duty. Just another heave or two, young fellow, and we'll do it. There's an example of training in self-help. Training looked upon as play, which enters into every waking hour. From morning till night, every day contributes to the building of healthy bodies and minds. Clever toys in which amusement and instruction are combined teach the young mind to compare and contrast colour, form and size. Behind their apparent simplicity is the art of those to whom the child mind is an open book. Is this a Royal Academician of 1963? You never can tell. There's a promising handyman for our brave new world. Why, here's dinner. How time does fly in this place. It's extra nice when appetite provides a spice. Do I like it or don't I? I do.
that little more how much it is. Tell Cook to come and look at this. Now for that after-dinner nap. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown, and Jill came tumbling after. Up got Jack, and home did trot, as fast as he could caper. Went to bed to mend his head with vinegar. You see, nurse, you've done the trick. Don't worry, friends. He'll be right back in a minute. Now we're ready to resume interest in the exciting world of our country home. A world in which to little people, toy and joy mean much the same thing. But if the sun comes out, and when we're young, how much that means, we'll surely find our way outdoors to feed some friends who'll nobly do their duty in time for breakfast, we hope. Or perhaps try a little fishing. Or with sister's willing aid, and give an acrobatic display. The future of these children might easily have been marred by the misfortune of war. Their parents, absorbed into the war effort, could not have given them the physical and mental foundations which you've seen being well and truly laid. But through the Red Cross and St. John War Organization, you and all who share in supporting its great work are providing in war an inspiration for peace. When peace returns, it will remain for us to pay our debt to the future by presenting it with a new generation of good citizens. The way is plain. Fresh air, healthful environment, physical training, the cultivation of character, sound education, adequate and wholesome food. These are the children's birthright. Are we willing to share in the responsibility of seeing that all children enjoy them? Of course we are. So, as we bid them good night at the end of their day, let not only our blessing, but our promise go with them. Good night, children.
don't grow up too soon.